Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the 3Q FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Techno Electric and Engineering Limited, hosted by Asian Market Securities Limited. This conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. Actual results may differ from such expectations, projections, etc., whether expressed or implied. Participants are requested to exercise caution while referring to such statements and remarks. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kamlesh Kotak from Asian Market Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Rutuja. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Asian Markets, we welcome you all to the 3QFI22 earnings conference course of Techno Electric and Engineering Company Limited. We have pleasure to invite Mr. P.P. Gupta, Managing Director, and Mr. Ankit Sarwaya, Director representing the company. I request Mr. P.P. Gupta ji to take us through an overview of the quarterly results, and then we shall begin the Q&A session. What are you, Gupta ji? Thank you. Thank you, Kamlesh. Very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to discuss our financial results for the quarter ending December 31st, 2021. Uh, anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or that could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the uh, uh, company faces and, and the challenges posed by the industry. Uh, let me quickly highlight our performance for the, firstly for the very quarter and then for nine months period ending uh, December 31. The total revenue for this quarter is at uh, 3 billion plus. It is up by 22.5% year on year and around 11% quarter on quarter. The more significant part is the EPC side, where the revenue is up to 3 billion, and uh, year on year is 46% and 32% quarter on quarter. The revenue from which segment stands at uh, meager 6.92 crore only this quarter. Uh, it is uh, revenue is lower for two reasons. Firstly, the wind was poor in this third quarter as we realized more wind in the second quarter this time uh, compared to last year. And also we uh, last year had uh, obtained a favorable appeal order uh, giving us a entitlement of a, a tariff charge of 0.975 uh, rupee per unit of the build for the years 1920 and 2021. So that amount was about 36 crore, which is part of the uh, comparative number of the previous year. Uh, EBITDA for the company stands at 42.6 crore for this quarter compared to 77.5 crore in the same period last year. But if we take away this one time uh, uh, previous period income of 35 crore, it will be around 41.6 crore. Uh, so that uh, revenue derived is 42.6 crore compared to 41.6 crore last year. The operating profit for the EPC segment this quarter stands at 40.26 crore compared to 36 and a half crore last year. Uh, we experienced the uh, EBITDA margin mainly due to high commodity. Uh, price cycle as all of you know, and higher overseas container freights. So it was a challenging uh, uh, decision whether we should uh, execute more or defer the execution, but our call was to grow it up 
uh, and whatever the depreciation marginally we have experienced in EBITDA, uh, uh, all the L2 networks of these projects are under revision with the project order, and we'll be a title for PV reimbursement down a quarter or two for uh, all this part. So <clears throat> we have seen this uh, 3 billion uh, turnover almost after seven to eight quarters. And we are confident going forward that this will be maintained. The other income is uh, again 120 crores compared to 11 crores. This includes uh, income out of the sale of our shareholding in a company, uh, in a JV company with Kalpatru uh, for our Northeast project. Uh, and, um, uh, and the gain is about 110 crores uh, in this quarter. Uh, the profit before tax is at 151 crores uh, compared to 75 crores last year and uh, uh, it is up by around 100% because of this uh, other income. Uh, the bad for the quarter is at 116.78 crores uh, compared to uh, last year 63, 64 crores up by 82%. The EPS for this quarter is at 10.36. Uh, the nine months uh, we have seen a total revenue of 766 crores, up by 13.6% year on year, and the revenue from EPC is at uh, around 700 crores, up by around 20% year on year. The revenue from wind segment is at 82 crores compared to 98 crore last year. Uh, it is mainly because of the uh, one-time uh, gain of 35 crore due to actual oil. A beta for the company stands at around 220 crores versus 190. 7 crore last year up by 11%. Uh, this is after adjusting one time revenue of wind segment last year. The operating profit for the EPC segment is at 113.56 crore compared to 111.5 crore last year. The operating margin is uh, at 16.6% uh, in the EPC segment. In the wind segment, it is at 85% approximately. The other income uh, is at 147 crore compared to 75 crore year on year. Uh, even last year also, the other income had included a uh, profit of about 50 crore by divesting the ownership in our Haryana project. And profit before tax for nine months is at 295 crore compared to 235 crore, and the up by 25%. And profit after tax is at 226 crore compared to 195 crore last year. The EPS is at 20.28. The current investment value uh, uh, that is cash and cash equivalents is at around uh, 1200 crores. That is almost 100 rupee per share. Uh, we have received various orders in this last six months, nine months, aggregating about 600 crores. We are placed L1 in two FGD orders, about 1600 crores, and one transmission asset of 765 kV for 250 crores. We hope to complete this uh, into. These, all, these will be converted into orders in this month or fairly latest by March. Uh, the unexecuted order book as of date is about 1600 crores with us. Uh, this will give us a visibility of order book of more than 3500 crores as of today. Uh, if no other business is booked in the last quarter, uh, then you may say it will be around uh, uh, 3000 crore plus as committed uh, in various uh, conference calls. As committed
it in last quarter, we will be receiving, recovering our performance of last year and shall be executing at least 50% of the uh, unexecuted order backlog carried over the year. Uh, and similarly for the year uh, going forward. Uh, we expect large business out of MGD segment, uh, AMI segment, and data centers. The above order book, unexecuted order book, does not include any business of data center uh, as of now. Uh, in the coming years, basically, I will say we see a strong power sector reforms uh, and uh, we will focus on efficiency, reliability, uh, and uh, cost and cost of power and stresses on overall improvement in the financial health of the sector. The power sector will continue to focus on renewable power related transmission infrastructure as green corridors. Uh, we, uh, we see that uh, the government has set a target of 500 gigawatt of renewable power by 2030. And uh, we similarly, I, I will also like to share that we are seeing now the business shifting from power to energy. And that's a very significant change. Uh, you can also observe from the very budget announced now uh, that government has given infrastructure, uh, infrastructure status to two businesses, data centers and energy storage solutions. Uh, both of which we would like to be part of. And we understand well this segment. This was long awaited, one of the reforms achieved now. Uh, the MGD sector coming to now, I'm going segment wise. First is the MGD segment. The MGD segment will continue to be in focus for the next five years. As per notification of Government of India, all coal fired thermal power plants need to limit their sulfur emission as notified by the Pollution Department by December 24 as of now. But uh, there is a considerable progress with CPSU in ordering the projects for the implementation of FGD solutions. But now the same is being followed by uh, SCBs and uh, private sector thereafter. Uh, we are already L1 in uh, around 16 billion business in this uh, in two tenders, as communicated earlier, and this level of business will continue on yearly basis for the next three, four years. As 80 gigawatt is yet to be uh, ordered and fitted uh, by the solutions by various uh, SCPs and private sector. Coming to transmission segment, we expect that there will be status quo in transmission side. Uh, it will be limited to evacuation of renewable power, uh, mainly through the uh, grid corridors. The TBCB bidding of 66 gigawatt out of 175 gigawatt is already tendered out, uh, tending for the last lot of 60 gigawatt uh, has uh, started now. <coughs> The two jobs which we booked uh, last year, uh, as discussed with you, uh, for seekers, uh, grid could not acquire the land, so that job has spilled over to this year, as well as we booked one job of Lucknow, uh, uh, for which uh, the execution uh, permission will be available after the election review. So both the jobs will be part of it. And uh, additionally, we have got a order for uh, Starlight uh, for the Assam project and Assam and Meghalaya project. Uh, we'll also be now, uh, we stand qualified of our own by virtue of EPC background under new QR rules of the grid coordinators. And we'll also be selectively participating in this project uh, of our own or in partnership with uh, uh, in which the union budget further allocates free lack role in power distribution to be re released over five years based on financial performance 
and viability demonstration by the uh, discoms. Uh, we believe this will be a very good uh, high-end solution requirements by discoms, and uh, we will uh, we'll be a part of this segment. Uh, we are good seeing good invest good interest from the large investors and mid funds to participate in this TVCB bridge uh, by making the company a significant partner. This will enhance our access to capital and will also help us in bidding for uh, more projects. Uh, distribution. Uh, on the distribution side, we see a lot of activity happening. Uh, particularly in the AMI segment. Uh, our project is at the peak now in execution for J and K, where we have already supplied around 50,000 meters, and we intend completing all the supplies by June end and completing the project during the year. Uh, the main aim of the government in all this is to contain losses so that uh, discoms are able to uh, better uh, achieve better efficiency and financial health. Mm -hmm. We had mentioned earlier that we are uh, we may further be taking interest in six lakh meters of JNK where we have a presence which is presently in country. Uh, apart from this, there are readings in media that government is utilizing this opportunity also as uh, reforming the sector while dealing with the COVID uh, stimulus initiatives, uh, which uh, in the name of, uh, in the disguised name of our neighbor's water, uh, which is a long standing demand. This is uh, uh, the the amendment to the Electricity Act and the amendment to the tariff policy and uh, limiting the cross subsidy and uh, payment the subsidy directly uh, the, to the consumers uh, is uh, uh, still to be implemented and uh, made way of life uh, in coming days. Uh, we are uh, very hopeful that power sector is at its very critical juncture and something good only has to happen going forward. Uh, in wind segment, as stated earlier, we have received our uh, outstanding up to June 2020. Uh, we are also made eligible for delayed payment interest charges by Madras High Court and uh, the NURC adapted. Uh, and we should be getting paid for this money shortly. Uh, the, as we got the REC certificate trading in market has already started post CRC or uh, post April order of November 21. Uh, and, uh, we have already uh, realized about 25 crore in the last this quarter, and balance will be liquidated before March end. Uh, the COVID has impacted our life in multiple ways, but one positive outcome, as I shared last time, is the digital space. Uh, with the growth in digital uh, data and then by IT policy of data, localized uh, data keeping, it is expected that third party data centers uh, industry will grow significantly. And in the next three years, we see this happening from half a gigawatt to two gigawatt and thereafter to five gigawatt in another two, three years. To date, most of these centers uh, were located in Mumbai, whereas now Chennai has become a preferred hub uh, because of the undersea cable uh, uh, being available uh, in Chennai too, as uh, Mumbai. Uh, and uh, our data center is in uh, advanced stage now, and it has uh, uh, progress to the construction phase, uh, which will be basically ultra scalable hyper density data center uh, meant for high end applications, and it will be around uh, 30 megawatt in load ca capability. Additionally, we will be able to consume uh, uh, our renewable power available in Chennai uh, to classify the data center as carbon neutral. 
and align with the major hyperscale customers like uh, uh, Google or Amazon, etc., because of their ESG commitments. The capex on this data center is about 1,200 crores, and uh, we have spent by now about uh, 50 crores on this. And uh, the investment uh, alone in the electromechanical part will be around 60%, uh, which is within in our project capability, and we'll be able to leverage the same. Uh, in additionally, we are also closely looking on uh, uh, energy storing solutions uh, in new of transmission systems, uh, additionally required by renewable power, and improve the grid management uh, uh, to facilitate large-scale uh, renewable power injection. Uh, with this, uh, I, I trust uh, I will write questions and uh, like to clarify more if any one of you wants to know more about us. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sandeep Tulsiyan from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, very uh, good evening, sir, and uh, congratulations on very healthy execution that you've demonstrated in the quarter. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. Yes, sir, please. Hello? Yeah, I'm listening to you, Sandeep. Okay. Yeah, so first question, uh, sir, is on the revenue target you had guided around. Uh, 1,000 to 1,100 crore kind of uh, EPC uh, revenue target that you had uh, given for the current financial year FY22. Uh, we have done close to 700 crores uh, in the first nine months period. Uh, so do you think uh, in the last quarter, based on the current execution run rate, uh, you can achieve this 300 to 400 crore kind of uh, revenue? Uh, and also parallelly, if you would like to give any guidance, you briefly mentioned you'll do 50% of your order book means around 1,500 crore. Uh, so is that the number we should go by for FY23? You see, uh, there is always a, uh, some time lag, but firstly coming to Q4, uh, it will be 300 crore plus only. Uh, so 1,000 will be achieving now this year as committed, uh, mm -hmm. as APC revenue. So now the minimum goal post is 3 billion a quarter. We will be doing definitely. And similarly, 3 billion will be further ramped up to 3 and up to 4 billion going forward. So, mm -hmm. uh, this year, like uh, last year, we had done about 800 crores, and it is 1000 crores this year plus. So, growth mm -hmm. is also about 25 percent. So, you can see at least a 25 percent growth next year also without considering any output of the data center being booked in the company. Okay. If this uh, data center output, which will be no less than 300, 400 crores, it will definitely be exceeding 1500 crores in that sense. But uh, okay. 250 crores without data center will definitely be targeted. Understood. And what would be the margin profile that we should be mentioned? Uh, I know you have conservatively guided in the past that one should not uh, look at the uh, quarterly margins that you have delivered of 18 to 20 percent and it should be in 15 to 16 percent uh, on a uh, sustainable basis uh, and there are some cost recoveries that you are hoping for that will come through. So from a margin perspective, uh, how should we look at uh, these numbers panning out based on the order backlog that you bid for on the FGD side as well as on the data center side what do you expect? Uh, around 15 percent uh, we, we like to maintain as always committed. Uh, there, are, there may be opportunities sometimes to make little more, little less, depending on commodity cycles like we are experiencing now. 
uh, it is almost after uh, seven, eight years uh, we are facing this challenge. But most of our contracts have a PV provision in the contract. But the mm-hmm. challenge especially we faced was that due to COVID, the contract period have lapsed for some of the contracts all going with us. So mm-hmm. the contract period extension and related L2 network need to be updated, which are in process with the main mm-hmm. customer. And we are hopeful of achieving it uh, in another two to four months. So that was, I say, but you can safely take a goalpost. Your guidance will continue to be 15% uh, as a a safe uh, margin, operating margin uh, in this business. Understood. Uh, So second question is on uh, the data center business. Uh, You mentioned you've done 50 crore kind of capex, and total capex is around, going to be around 1,200 uh, crores that you are uh, targeting. Uh, so, how much of that you would incur in FY23 next year? And what is the progress on getting a JV partner? You know, because that will be very essential because otherwise the capex in our books will be very high. And out of this 60%, uh, which you mentioned will be the EPC order, uh, should, it, should we consider 60% of the entire 1200 crore or uh, that 60% should be of the uh, plant and machinery portion only, which will be about three, four hundred crores, if you can give clarity on that. Yes, 60% will relate to the 1,200 crores. Uh, that is an electromechanical segment with a backup uh, 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 power uh, solutions, power receiving solutions. And even we will be experiencing uh, around 25 megawatt hours of energy storage solution also. Uh, in our scheme of things. So that will uh, all be featuring as a part of it, number one. Number two, our target for uh, next year first is to commission uh, first phase of uh, 8 megawatt. The partners, uh, many, about two to three partners are being actively discussed. Uh, and we are hopeful to uh, close with one of them in next three to four months. But uh, after, uh, uh, I'll ask Ankit to speak on uh, data center after you are through with other uh, issues to update you on that side. But okay. another interesting feature which is emerging as the opportunity now is energy storage solutions. Like 30 megawatt mm-hmm. wants to set, uh, set a target to team it, you know, in the next uh, five years. Uh, and mm-hmm. also grant uh, this. So this is also a very exciting opportunity like data center for Tecnola, uh, which will be first mover and uh, will be better over transmission assets. Uh, and it will be supplementary to transmission assets. Uh, so this, uh, this again throws up a very, uh, that we will also be traveling, you know, the power to energy now. The, any company which wants to be performing and progressive in outlook, then we must start uh, be a part of the energy segment now in the country. Uh, mm-hmm. in the and that is how the world is moving faster than us. Uh, and we all need to catch up with it, sir. Uh, so uh, that is a very, very exciting place. Uh, never seen in my last three decades, which we will see in the last one decade. That so much has to be learned implementing and achieved again. Mm-hmm. Understood. And last, a couple of clarifications. Uh, one is you mentioned there is a 25 crore uh, wind REC revenue that you have booked, uh, but in your total revenue for wind segment was 9 crore. Uh, so, uh, you know, where do we uh, see that? Oh, sorry, it was 7 crore. So where do we see that 25 crore amount that you booked? And the second is on, you mentioned there is a transmission boot project, TBCD project that you'll bid for uh, in partnership or either on your own. So what could be the tentative size of that? Those are the two final questions. Thank you. Well, firstly, on REP certificate, we book the revenue on pro rata basis, quarter on quarter, as we are eligible for. At 25 crore, I mentioned, we realize cash by selling REC certificates which was uh, put under hold by virtue of the actual order earlier and uh, 
uh, uh, to set aside CRC order and ground reality happened only in November 21. So trading has commenced from November onwards. It happens once a month. Uh, and already about uh, 5 million uh, REC stands sold. The only inventory left to be sold is 3 million now. Whereas we anticipate demand is still another 8 to 10 million in this year. So it's a good opportunity. To, uh, we'll be able to, we, we are holding now another 2 lakh certificates with us. So we'll be able to rely on this 20 crore also by March. Uh, mm -hmm. February or maybe rest in March. Uh, as well as the REC certificates are. Mm -hmm. And on the uh, transmission boot side, and what is this the cash position that you mentioned at the beginning? Uh, was that the uh, net cash you have, or uh, there is some gross debt also on the books? No, so it's the net cash in hand. We are debt free, but there is nothing okay. minus. It's under rupee a share, almost in the company now. And this cash will strengthen us to explore many new opportunities, you know. Uh, like energy storage solutions, data centers. So new avenues are uh, available to us in multiple ways. And uh, mm -hmm. additionally, I would like to add that uh, this uh, other income, company will continue to realize under crop plus as we are going forward. Uh, we have that, that kind of uh, potentiality and opportunity being built uh, within the system which are uh, uh, and, uh, not uh, accounting fast, but will be available to us to monetize uh, those uh, land banks or other assets, or even uh, return from the deployed liquidity in the uh, market in secured uh, liquid funds and uh, bonds, etc. So all this put together is a we we are in a very healthy position to grow up the company to be a part of the technology. I would truly like to say that we are not a, a, a EPC company like any other. We are purely a technology solution company and trust technological challenges in power sector. And we need mm -hmm. to to attach that. Got it. So sorry, on, on that transmission um, project, if you can give the size, what will be the tentative size? But it will be, we'll be only taking part in small value, complex uh, locations, stations which are strongly in uh, uh, substation segments. Mm -hmm. So it will be around 700 to 1000 crores. We may succeed only in winning uh, no more than uh, 400, 500 crore business maybe. So it will only be to maintain our presence in the segment and also to generate some EPC business for us in time. Uh, all right, sir. Wishing you all the best. Thank you for taking uh, so many questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of the Pesha Garwal from UTI Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, so my first question is, uh, can you help us understand by when do you expect the EPC segments margin to normalize? Sir, I think our margins are more than normal already. It is a temporary return. But overall, this year also will be about 15% of the going forward also, uh, I can assure you. So there is uh, no market depreciation per se, except uh, certain quarter on quarter accounting uh, norms. Okay. No, uh, my uh, question was, uh, you have some commodity headwinds with you. So till when these headwinds would be with you? No, I could not get you, sir. Can you repeat your question? Uh, right now, our margin uh, on a quarterly basis in the EPC segment is lower than usual. So how long you expect that to be lower than your usual? That was my question, not for the full year person. Sir, uh, <laughs> these are very relative terms, lower or higher. We trust we deserve to make 15% money having delivered a complex quality project in time. And this we will continue to achieve uh, for in the near future also. Sure, sure. Uh, my second question is to Ankit. 
Ankit, uh, if we look at the progress on your data center, it seems like apart from a uh, land uh, related capex, nothing has been spent till date. So can you help me understand why there is a delay in execution as we have been talking about data center since a uh, year plus? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to address this question. Yes. I'll address the question. I will not say there is a delay, but uh, one needs to keep in mind that we started this whole journey in the industry only a year back. And the design engineering work on the data center only started from the month of August onwards. Uh, any design engineering of a new solution or a new industry can take time for any organization to absorb and move forward with especially with Technoelectric because what we are trying to do over here is something little different than what is being practiced in the industry till date. And therefore it brings forward a substantial amount of learning and challenges on the table, but obviously makes the data center unique and uh, makes it stand out in the industry. And therefore it could have taken us two to three months additional to what it would have generally taken for an established player. But I will not say there's a delay. More or less, we are in line to uh, start the execution on the ground on full swing probably in a month or two's time. And already substantial progress has been made towards the design work. And today, I can proudly say that the kind of design engineering which has gone into data center is significantly outstanding because uh, our biggest fear is getting addressed, which is most of the hyperscale customers today are directly approaching us and trying to understand what exactly is it that we are trying to do with this project. And that is a stamp of uh, the uh, kind of work that has gone into the center, though it has taken longer, but I think it is rewarding. Understood. And uh, lastly, uh, can you share the uh, cash balance uh, uh, and investment uh, on books and also the outstanding receivables on them? Sir, we uh, already stated you that it is around 1200 crores in cash and cash equivalents, that is 100 rupees a share. And uh, that is outstanding for us is about 550 crores uh, in total. Uh, 550 is for Vinge, right? Yeah, yeah. Including okay. Vinge. Including uh, Vinge. And what is specifically for Vin? About uh, 150 crores. Okay. okay. Thank you. And on the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushal Dadia from Axis Bank. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I actually missed uh, the initial uh, comment on the reduction in wind revenues uh, this quarter. So I heard there were some 35, 36 crores of one-off item. Could you please uh, re-explain that, sir? But we are in a wind segment under a regime called a double PC plus REC certification. This is one of the uh, schemes of the Government of India as against single tariff policy, which is called FIT or preferential tariff. So in this scheme, the basically a double PC is fixed year on year uh, by any state government or state utility. Uh, here the dispute uh, was basically uh, on uh, the tariff uh, stated by the state regulator, which was challenged in April uh, by IWPA along with us and uh, that was uh, set aside. Uh, they had uh, truncated the tariff to 2 rupee 14 pesa uh, from earlier paid tariff of 3 rupee 12 pesa. So that uh, 3 rupee 12 pesa was reinstated last year uh, uh, by the order uh, applicable uh, from the year 19 uh, April itself. So that is how those two year tariffs were, revenues were booked last year. Uh, for the power supply. Understood. So yeah. this one of item was there in FI21 and yeah. it is even even uh, excluding this one of item uh, there were some low winds in this quarter? Yeah, compared to last year because the Q2 was stronger this year uh, than last year but Q3 was little weaker than last year. 
Okay. But overall, the generation levels are better than last year, if you ask me on a totality basis. By, if you take uh, data as of the summer end, mm -hmm. that we have produced uh, with about 200 million units uh, by then. And as of today, we have already achieved about 218 million, compared to 205 million last year. So it is around 5% more than last year. Noted. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Degan Bum from SVIP Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of number. Uh, so I just uh, I just missed out on something. Uh, you said something about the other income uh, giving us hundred crores. Uh, so would that be every quarter or uh, would that be annually? Sir, I could not get you. Uh, you. Sir, you were mentioning something about the other income being hundred crores. So yeah. I just wanted to know if if that's quarterly or annually. 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 All right. And uh, sir, just one other question was that we'd made a loss of about 7.6 crores in the power segment uh, with revenues also being uh, substantially lower. Is that uh, how it's going to be going ahead or uh, will we be maintaining the 48 crore revenue uh, quarterly? Sir, I think uh, we are in wind power only, number one. And wind power is a seasonal uh, segment. First two quarters generally produce about 80-85% of the top line. And last two quarters are only 10-15%. It is historically like that, uh, year on year for the last 10 years. So it will continue to be same. By and large, you can take that wind gives us a top line of around 95-200 to crores. And uh, including the value of the REC certificates. And it will continue like that. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rabindranath Nair from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, uh, what is the, uh, if you take the one of item, uh, what would be the total revenue for the uh, wind segment in this quarter? And how will you explain the loss of 7.61 crore in this quarter? Sir, that is a, because you have to provide depreciation uh, quarter on quarter at O&M charges. Uh, the cost outgo is generally around 14-15 crore in the wind uh, segment. The revenue was 7 crore this year, so that is how the wind segment there is a deficit uh, per se, but uh, now wind segment is a part, it's a division of techno-electric where results are uh, produced uh, along with the PC, uh, quarter on quarter. So last two quarters uh, wind segment has shown a surplus of almost 55 crores. So uh, and the third and fourth quarter always shows a little minus unless you have some kind of one-off like last year we had uh, or this tariff revision. Uh, otherwise, uh, the third, fourth quarter in wind segment are always in a box. Okay. As far as so, the cooking uh, If we, if we uh, you know, include the one-off in this quarter, what would be the just revenue for this quarter uh, in wind segment? In wind segment, it is around uh, seven crores. Sir. Okay, seven crores. It is considering. Okay. And about the RC certificates, you mentioned that you have two lakh RC is pending. So this is been, you know, yet to be traded, or it is you have booked the revenue for this. Uh, how? Uh, you have... No, as already explained, sir, the RC revenue certificate revenue we take quarter on quarter as the entitlement happens. I only said we had cashed in this quarter for 25 crore uh, by, as the trading has started, resumed on power exchanges for RDC certificate from November onwards. So we were holding around uh, uh, 4 lakh uh, plus certificates out of which we have sold out 2.5 lakhs for 25 crores. Okay. So uh, rest you will be sending in, uh, selling in this uh, financial year. 
my dream will be liquidated in coming two months, this month and next month. Okay, so what would be the uh, contribution from this? This will be 20 crores. 20 crores, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Krantri Batani from Wealth Mill Securities. Please go ahead. I just want to know about uh, what is your plans because uh, plans with respect to data centers are concerned. Okay, there is a lot of emphasis is given in this budget and also uh, Indian data centers, there is a lot, a lot of focus. Can you just give what's your plans and how you are going to execute and any timelines and what is the incremental revenue that's going to uh, contribute from the data center business? Ankit, would you like to answer this question? Yes, I'll take it. So basically, uh, the Tech2 is putting up data centers and the idea is to set up multiple data centers across India. We are basically setting up these data centers on two pillars of techno. One is the capability of providing uh, specialized uh, electromechanical EPC services. And second is the understanding of uh, setting up renewable energy across India and uh, being able to provide uh, power to these data centers, renewable energy power to these data centers to ensure that they are uh, carbon neutral and ultimately helps our customer meet their ESG compliance. And on the basis of these two strong pillars, Techno has aimed to develop about uh, 200 to 250 megawatt of data centers across India over the next six, seven years time. And to begin with, uh, we have targeted, uh, we have chosen Chennai as a first location for data center. And the reason for being in Chennai is because it is uh, uh, a growing market, not as saturated as Mumbai today. Though Mumbai and Chennai are the two, two most uh, sought after markets for data center, uh, Mumbai being number one as far as the capacity, installed capacity is concerned, and Chennai is catching up fast and therefore the fastest growing market in India for data centers. And that's how we decided on Chennai. And secondly, we have our existing renewable energy assets commissioned in uh, Tamil Nadu, which can be wheeled, the power from those assets can be wheeled up to our data center and ensuring this is a carbon neutral data center. And the second asset we plan to bring up uh, in Kolkata, and then we might plan to do something in Mumbai. Uh, that's the plan for the next two to three assets. And each of these assets would be in the range of anywhere between 25 to 30 megawatt of IT load. And as a facility load, one can say roughly about uh, 36 to 42 megawatt. Okay, thank you. Thanks uh, for explaining in detail. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devakar Rana from Prudent Equity. Please go ahead. Hello, good evening, sir. Yeah. So basically, I want, yeah, basically I want to know that what are the EBITDA margin in this FGD orders? You can take it around uh, 15 to percent plus. Sir. 15 percent plus. Okay. And the upcoming orders that you have bid on? Uh, that the same have margin. Similar, sir. Same. Okay, okay, yeah. The next question is basically in the recent budget, the government has increased the, you know, basic custom duty on smart meters from 15% to 25 meters, 25%. So basically, will this impact our current uh, smart meter order book? No, no, no. You see, rather, they, uh, they have it on electronic items. You must have read in the likely to go down overall, you know, but we are using all the meters made in India by companies like Schneider, uh, yeah, yeah. or uh, Landis Gears, uh, or Gears, and any more will happen in India under IPL scheme. So we don't see any threat of this kind of issues. And if chip making starts in India, the prices are further going to see protection. Uh, 
and even government wants uh, cheaper smart meters, not costlier, as a solution. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So uh, the last question is basically: Have we re- have we received uh, all the money after selling this Kohima JV? Is there any uh, money pending? No, zero. We received hundred percent, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sir, from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Gandhi from Chris Trade Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question is continuation of data center. Can you elaborate something more on like uh, how much investment will be going under each of these three centers which you are planning? When will they start flowing revenue? Are they getting implemented in phases? And uh, what are the normal margins expectations for each of them? Maybe it's a three to five year call or a little beyond. But if you can take some more business plan, what you have, if you can share, it will be helpful. Yeah, Ankit, would you like to get plans? I'll take this up. So basically, uh, we are planning centers, as I mentioned earlier, in Chennai, Calcutta, and then we are exploring a third location. But most likely shortlisting it to Mumbai, and uh, as I mentioned, each of these centers would be approximately 25 to 30 megawatt of IT load, and capex can be assumed at about 45 crores per megawatt of the IT load. So, on an average, one can say anywhere between 1,000 or 1,200 crores on an average of capex per center. And this kind of capex is planned uh, uh, over uh, four years for each of the centers because each of the center might come in uh, four phases, and each phase being uh, commissioned uh, uh, subsequent to the commissioning of the past phase, and each phase may come every year. So let's say, for instance, Chennai Data Center is commissioned by... Uh, June 2023, uh, that would be the first phase commissioning, and the second phase by June 24th, third by June 25th, fourth by June 26th. And each of these phases, obviously the first phase is heavier in CAPEX because you are basically deploying the civil structure work of the complete data center up front, and the electromechanical work is what is phased out. So one can look at about 250 crores of electromechanical work for each of the phases, and the additional cost of about 100, 120 crore upfront in the phase one towards the civil structure work. Uh, similarly, would be the case for the data center in Kolkata and then going forward in Bombay. Uh, and those centers may uh, start hopefully uh, in a year. Uh, from now, we can think of beginning the Calcutta project, obviously, depending upon the progress in Chennai and subject to customer interest, but hopefully by end of the year or beginning next year, we can think of starting the work in Calcutta and maybe a year from there for Mumbai. Uh, something on revenue, uh, expectations and margins, maybe phase wise. At uh, at its peak occupancy, one can expect a revenue of approximately. Uh, 400 crores with a margin of anywhere between 70-75%. Uh, it is subject to the customer mix that we are able to achieve finally, but uh, expecting a margin of 70-75% to 75% at 400 to 500 crore of revenue. And uh, we expect uh, peak occupancy to be achieved in three years? Yes, you can say... Uh, each phase will be deployed only once we have a, a assigned time. customer behind, and the previous phase is completely occupied. Right. Thank you, and all, all the best for the time. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Keshav Gar from CCIPL. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for providing me this opportunity. Sir, uh, in EPC segment, we did a peak revenue of 1,200 crore way back in uh, 2017. And so this year, uh, we are likely to close uh, this revenue at uh, less than 1,100 crore. So 
the so after we consider inflation then this cost is even more uh, is even more dramatic so forward sir how do you foresee that the company can scale up this epc business i think the worst is behind us number 1 and uh, number 2 with the growing order book position uh, of 30 billion plus uh, first time uh, in last few years uh, was obviously top line uh, is likely to grow uh, next year we are definitely targeting no less than 20 crores uh, out of uh, this uh, order backlog and uh, some revenue will happen out of data center also so we definitely see that growth is back as uh, budget is also very promising on private investment and capex so we are hopeful whatever we have uh, could not do in achieve rather in last 3 4 years uh, will be achieved in next 3 4 years including the loss of last 3 4 years so you can expect that uh, in another 3 years uh, that no we will achieve a top line of uh, Uh, 1750 2000 crores uh, that is how it has always gone in steps not uh, uh, as a progressively year on year uh, because of the government programs or upsets uh, but nevertheless in last three years also even if our top line has not grown uh, matching uh, with the uh, other things we have not allowed our bottom line to erode either We have successfully retained the bottom line uh, cash flows uh, and also the financial health of the company. And the uh, company is uh, debt free now, and we have a lot of cash in books to see further growth by not only existing EPC area but in uh, future areas. But I have one thing to add here, sir, that this company need to be looked not purely as a EPC in TNT. it need to be looked at as a technological solution provider in the power sector and uh, we rate it accordingly i will say like we are migrating now from power to energy we will be part of data center we will be part of energy storage and uh, renewable power and what not so uh, we will keep moving uh, the technology knowledge power curve uh, along with the opportunities so as we have always maintained sir that we don't want to be the largest in any segment but we will always aim to be the best in a, in a segment we are in sure sir uh, sir and also sir since we our balance sheet is uh, so strong i think maybe the strongest in the whole industry so so uh, in that case sir uh, if you could do a regular share buyback sir then what will happen our eps will grow faster than our revenue and profits so that will be a great boon for shareholders and also so that is the most taxable and i understand so that you mentioned this in last quarter phone call also that maybe you are thinking about it so so any clarity on a share buyback you see firstly share buyback is not our forte sir we leave it to uh, you people to encourage us but definitely we will be liberal in uh, dividends as well as we may contemplate buy back also uh post markets uh, getting a bit of stability uh and not volatility like now uh, so i think uh, we have just uh, uh, come out of the bad past or stagnating past and uh, future is going to be improving every day we will be targeting eps of no less than 50 rupees uh i uh, in next 3 to 4 years uh, from here onwards with this year ending at no less than 25 rupees uh, okay sir so thank you very much and best of luck to thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rahul jain from anand jathi please go ahead Rajan, please go ahead with your question. The line is unmuted. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Yes, sir. So, so wanted to clarify on the order inflow and order book numbers. 
So, sir, uh, what was the order inflow in Q3 as well as in nine months? In Q nine months is six hundred crore by now, and uh, only for Q3. I worked out separately. You can take Q3 is uh, at least uh, about uh, 250 crores out of the 600 crores. Uh, two jobs I remember, one from Power Grid and one from Starlight. Uh, we have taken and totally 600 crores. It lasts nine months. But now we are L1 in about 18 million. Uh, two FGD orders and uh, one uh, 765 KB uh, transmission uh, asset. And these orders should happen by end of this month or early next month. Uh, so we should be closing our book uh, with the order backlog of uh, no less than uh, 30 billion. First time after three years. Uh, and then we will keep building in future. Okay. Sir, uh, what is the current order backlog you mentioned? The order backlog is 1600 crores, sir, as, as of today. Okay. Yeah. And what is the guidance for the next year order inflow? Uh, we should uh, look on a order inflow of uh, at least about uh, 2.5 billion. 2.5 billion. Okay. So, so this would be uh, like uh, coming from? Uh, 25. Uh, sorry, sir? 25. 20, yeah. So, sir, this would be coming from like with sectors? Yeah, mainly FGD and uh, transmission, uh, as well as uh, distribution, uh, data centers, all put together. Okay, so all the centers are pushed. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajkumar V, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats to the good set of results. Sir, uh, just two questions. Uh, first one on the wind segment uh, for the March uh, 21 quarter, uh, you had shown a negative uh, bottom line of 22 crores. Just wanted to know whether we can expect a similar number for the current March 22 quarter or whether the bottom line negative will be similar to the current December quarter. You see, I already have explained in previous questions that wind is a seasonal uh, business. First two quarters are always strong over the last two quarters because yeah. uh, wind season is linked to March uh, season largely. So sometimes it lasts uh, up to October end and sometimes it is over in September itself. Uh, that is how we have seen the cycles. So in first two quarters, we realized about 85% of the top line in weight. And last two quarters gives us only 50%. So this practice, uh, it's an industry-wide trend. And same is experienced by our workers also. Uh, and same will continue going forward also. OK. No, sir, the reason why I'm asking is uh, the last year, March quarter, has shown a significant loss. So that's why I wanted to check whether uh, we can work on the current December number as a run rate or we should take an uh, you know, uh, addition. And the wind segment should always be looked on an annual basis. Uh, okay. basis. Okay, got it, sir. And, and sir, the second question is, uh, given your good cash position, uh, just wanted to know, are we not looking at uh, doing any buyback given the subdued prices? Bharat, given the cash position, what do you want to know? Yeah, I want to know, is the company looking at doing a buyback of shares? Yeah, we were looking. We thought that in this budget, uh, the tax on buyback will be taken care of by the government. So we have engaged the advisors to us. Uh, if we don't go for buyback, we'll definitely come out with liberal new tax. But some buyback will happen uh, in near future. Okay. Thank you, sir. All the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepesh Agarwal from UTI Asset Management. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, thanks for opportunity again. Uh, uh, just a bookkeeping question. You mentioned order book is at eighteen hundred crore, uh, sixteen eighteen hundred crores, and the uh, inflows were two fifty crores in the quarter. But if I look at the order book uh, at the end of September twenty one, that was two thousand crore. Uh, so can you help us reconcile? Is there some cancellation of order? There is no cancellation, sir. We have only filtered something. Residual is always left out uh, in a project 10-20 crore, which is not to be executed. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, like this, uh, we have definitely taken off the books about 60-70 crores uh, uh, from the books. Uh, earlier, we had uh, stated about uh, 1750 crores and 250 crore as a L1. That's how we were expressing. Now that 250 crore has become an order book and L1 has emerged uh, for another 18 billion uh, rupees. Uh, so oh. that is how it, is. it goes dynamically, you know, quarter on quarter. Understood. And thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Kamlesh Kotak for closing comments. Yeah. Uh, before that, Gupta ji, just two points I want to understand. How much is the L1? Can you just quantify the value of two FGD and one 765 KV orders, sir? It is, uh, you can take uh, 14 and a half uh, billion for FGD and two and a half billion for transmission. Okay. And sir, about the current 1800 crore order book, can you just help us with the breakup? How much is FGD distribution substation? Yeah. Yes, I know. Uh, the present uh, order book, we are all doing one uh, uh, FGD project now at Bokaro for DVC. Mm -hmm. so, so you can uh, take uh, uh, one minute. Uh, FGD unexecuted part today is around uh, uh, 1.7 billion. Okay. Uh, un, uh, which is in execution. Okay. And the uh, rest of the projects are transmission and distribution in 1600 crores. 1600 total, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, out of which one, uh, 170 if you take out, okay. 1430 crore is a transmission distribution. Okay. And these are all India orders, right? No export orders part of it. No, there is one export, sir, uh, Africa, uh, Togo. That How good. much is that? This is 10 million. 10 million US dollars. Okay. 75. Okay. Fine. Great, sir. That's very useful. Okay. So we conclude the call, sir. Any closing remarks you would like to give? Yeah. I would definitely like to appeal to my investment community that we should not be looked on as a EPC in a commodity sector. We are knowledge-based uh, uh, and uh, technology-based company providing high-end complex solutions in the industry and have been dynamic um, between generation, distribution, transmission, and the opportunities. We never aim to be the largest. We aim to be the best. That is our 40 years of uh, presence in this market uh, of power. And we cater both to power as well as uh, general, uh, power consuming industries. Secondly, now the power itself is uh, getting uh, modified to energy sector. That's what the exciting journey is for us, from power to energy. So we'll be looking on a lot more technologies uh, like uh, energy storage, data centers, carbon neutral, climate change will be a part of us. We will be ESG compliant also, which we have been for the last 10 years. But now we document it also for the purpose of our investors. So we are very different uh, background company than other, many others, uh, ESG compliant, green power. And we were the first mover in, uh, uh, let me share a journey of TechnoSan. We were the first mover in uh, transmission, triple P project. We were the first mover in IPP, in renewable energy. We are the, again, uh, uh, I'll say as a power sector company, we are first mover in data center also, unlike telecoms who have been in presence till date. 
and now we are eyeing in energy storage also as a uh, challenging sector and we will keep uh, looking on more opportunities in energy space going forward and we will be ESG compliant also additionally so our investors need to look on us uh, differently that's what I like to appeal. Sure sir. So thank you Uptaji for that insightful thought and uh, uh, yes, uh, our look that you shared with us. With that we conclude the call. Thanks everyone for joining for the call. Have a good day ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I have a closing remark to make. I'd yes. like to thank all of you, sir, for joining the conference call. Uh, in case you still have any query related to our performance, please drop in a mail and it will be promptly attended. Uh, and I also welcome you to, if you are happen to be this part of India, to visit our office and see how we handle our business uh, and deliver. Uh, with this, uh, I will once again like to say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for joining the call. And uh, Kamlesh may close the conference now. Thank you very much, sir. With that, we conclude the call. Thanks, and we may disconnect now. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Asian Market Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.